uh, I mean, uh, our brother introduced me, but I want to tell you the difference between the man on the pulpit and the one sitting in the chair is the man on the pulpit need more, more God than the person sitting there. That's all. All right. He is not more holy or his supernatural power and so on. Uh, he, maybe we have journeyed, all of us have journeyed and gone through challenges in our life. From there, we discover God. There are moments that we, uh, we don't have faith, we don't even have hope. But I want to tell you, when you have no faith and no hope, love walk into your life. Because God is love. He says the greatest is love. So God decided to be involved in your life and my life. That's why we made a difference. Uh, a little bit about what I do. Uh, I'm, I run a printing company, like uh, brother said. The night I go to Bible school and study, because you want to serve God, you, in order to, for an aeroplane to fly, you need a runway. Uh, so you need to study. Uh, you need to do your Bible study and so on before you can really go out there. Because the Bible says, I send you as lamb among wolves. So you can know that there are a lot of challenges outside if you are not grounded with the word of God. So you and I need to study. So I, I, I do that. And then uh, I, I, I went through challenges. I ran my business. I was a guarantor for loan. Then I was sued for, to be a bankrupt, you know. And in those moments when I was going through that challenges, uh, I was approached to serve in the ministry. And I told, uh, I told God, God, you help me, I serve you. But then I heard God saying, you serve me, I help you. <laughs> you know? So we all want to God to do everything for us first before we do anything for him. Yeah? But God said, no, you step forward, I will take care of you. And so I was um, challenged because of a guarantor for a loan. It started from a magistrate court, then it went to high court, then it went to supreme court. So you can see the amount multiplied, multiplied with compounded interest. But in that period of 10 years, uh, I every night pray, I just, I even pray prayer, God, you know, if something happened to me, shame on you, you know. I, I pray prayers like that, you know, foolish prayers. Uh, when we are young Christians, sometimes we pray, God, if you give me a lottery ticket, I'll give it to you, you know. Uh, we pray foolish prayers. Uh, but anyway, uh, God knows uh, God knows us. And so uh, in, in those moments when you go through those challenges, then you, uh, you tell God and all these things. But then I want to tell you that night, wake up, pray, and so on. But after 10 years, this whole case was just strike off from in the court. So... God is, God is faithful. He doesn't always do at your timing, but he, is, he says, uh, God is not a man that he will lie, nor a son of man that he will repent. Have he not said, will he not do? See, the word of God and the promises of God is in the Bible, you all know, but it, is, it has to be incarnate into our life, and make real in our life. The experiences, the challenge, the, the promises that you, you hear, you have to... Uh, it must you, allow you to trust and exercise faith. And then you see, oh, yeah, God did say. Our brother said he pray, prayed. Thomas said he prayed. And God answered. He's the God of the impossible, you know. So I want to, to uh, uh, tell you all a little bit, uh, maybe just a, a, little bit, uh, a little bit about what I do in the ministry. Uh, because I promised God that I will serve him so in the uh, years I have started a ministry called God's Donkey Ministry, which I'm going to share with you because sister asked me to share about the ministry. Uh, I started ministry and it was then when I, I got received a phone call and said, brother, can you take care of this pastor? He is sick. So I, I said, okay, I dropped everything. I went and picked up the pastor, take him to see doctor, have dinner with him. And then eventually... Uh, you know, over the conversation, I told him about what I do in the ministry. And then he called Miles Monroe. Have you all heard of Miles Monroe? He called Miles Monroe in Bahamas. So Miles Monroe wrote a letter to me, please come to Bahamas. And then I, I received the Global Leadership Award from Miles Monroe. And from, from, the, from that day onward, the, uh, the spiritual work, the life, was different because God began to promote 
So today I'm involved in about seven international ministry. Uh, I am uh, the international director for Christians for Israel. And uh, I started Christians for Israel in Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, Philippines, Myanmar, Cambodia. So I've traveled many countries. The last was in Japan. Uh, or, or rather, December I was in India. Uh, so then I got, because of the network, a lot of other pastors, different ministries, Julius Shubi, John Mulindi, everybody begin to recruit me into their ministry to help them. So, so I'm involved in several ministries. But uh, among some of the things I do, I do church planting work, I do mission work and so on. Uh, and uh, I do training the police force in the Philippines in a program mo called Moral Recovery. Uh, I meet the general of the police force. He says, sir, can you come and teach our policemen moral recovery, you know, morally, not corrupted and so on. So I say, uh, general, men know what is right and wrong, but they choose to do wrong. Uh, but what, how, what can I say to them that can change them unless you allow me to teach them the word of God? Without the fear of God, no man will change, you know, without the fear. So I teach them Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Well, repentance, power of the cross, heaven and hell, and all this kind of thing. But, uh, but I want to tell you all, uh, you all look so serious. <laughs> anyway, I want to tell you all a joke. I, uh, I used to share in the Philippines in a classroom of 300 people. I say, a young boy lost his handphone to a monkey. And the monkey took the handphone uh, up to the tree. So the young man summoned for three religious persons. One was a Buddhist monk, and the Buddhist monk prayed and prayed and prayed, but the monkey did not bring down the handphone. And then he asked for a, a, a Muslim dawah to pray, and the Muslim man prayed and prayed, the monkey did not pray. But when they asked for a Roman Catholic priest to pray, the monkey brought down the handphone. So they asked the Roman Catholic priest, why is it you pray so powerful? And the Roman Catholic priest says, no, no, the monkey understands sign language. After I pray, I did this. If you don't bring now, I cut your neck. <laughs> I, I, I. So I got your attention. Uh, anyway, uh, I want to tell you all that I'm so encouraged by the songs that you all sang. Uh, how can I repay what God has done for our life? So basically, uh, uh, today I want to share with you all on this message called Meeting God Through a Brain Donkey. It's a message of servanthood. If I tell you today I'm speaking servanthood, some of you may not come because some of you think that you all know what servanthood is all about. But I want to tell you that Jesus' disciples, uh, though they were disciples of Jesus Christ, they did not understand about servanthood because at least three occasions Jesus explained what servanthood is all about. He said that I have come uh, to serve and not to be served. And even at the uh, uh, Last Supper, before the Last Supper, they were taking communion. Jesus told his disciples, unlike the Gentiles, they lord over one another. But you are different. You have, I are coming to serve the people. So I want to tell you, it's, uh, understand that servanthood is a very important thing in the eyes of God because uh, Jesus' three and a half years journey with his disciples, he kept on explaining to them uh, this, this principle of the servanthood. Jesus' message to the world, for God so loved the world, uh, that he gave his only begotten son. But Jesus' message to the disciples, said, I have come uh, to serve and not to be served. And I want to tell you that when Jesus, if you are not a Christian, you need Jesus in your life. Because he's the only way to heaven, all right? But I, if you are a Christian, I want to tell you that going to heaven is not the most important thing. Because uh, if it was the most important thing, the day you confess your sin and accept Jesus in your life, poof, you should be in heaven, but you're still here. <laughs> huh? Correct. You are still here because God needs you and me. Because there's a, a, a work for you and I to do. There's a journey uh, that we are... We are we are selected. We are not a mistake because God does not make mistakes. You all make mistakes. I make mistakes. But God does not make mistakes. He, he says you did not choose him. He chose you. When God chose you, he must have believed in you. He must have known uh, there is something special in you that somebody else needs that. 
that testimony that brother shared, somebody need that testimony. You know, and so your life, my life, the journey that you go through and I go through, there are uh, different challenges that we go through that not only meant for us to see the glory of God, but meant for somebody down the road to borrow that strength uh, to say, yes, God is alive. You know, I want to tell you a story. Uh, some years ago, I had a good friend, pastor from South Africa that came and uh, I, when he comes, I do donkey ministry. I pick up the pastors. I bring them to church, bring them to church. I take care of hospitality. I have a group of friends who are called donkeys, like me. All right? Jesus is the word. The word sat on the donkey, and the donkey took the word into the city. So we, we are people who go to airport, pick up pastor, bring them to the church, bring them to the take care of the hospital. We are basically servants, serving the man of God, you know? And so that, that's why we call ourselves donkeys. Uh, and uh, so I want to tell you that this pastor came. Then one day he brought his wife. His wife had four arteries blocked in his uh, chest. And uh, she went to uh, uh, this Seventh day Adventist or something in, in Penang uh, Hospital uh, for, to do checkup. And they found that she had four blocks in the arteries. So, you know, it's costly. So a lot of church members and people pray like crazy for her, you know. And then after praying for her, three of her arteries were cleared. All right? But then one artery was still blocked. So they brought this out to me. Why God only cleared three and one didn't clear? So I prayed for a moment and I, I spoke to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to me and said, three is clear to show that God is alive. One is left for the church to be alive. <laughs> so the church needs to minister, to reach out, to help, to give, to support. Uh, yeah, that's where your work is. The church needs to be alive. Yeah? So when the people see the church giving, supporting, doing, then they say, God is alive, church is alive. Amen. And so you and I need to be alive. It's not just coming to church. You know, coming to church every Sunday, uh, uh, there are two type of pillars in the church. Pillars that support the church and the caterpillar that crawl in every Sunday and crawl every Sunday. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that you are pillars of the church uh, because God raised you to make a difference out there. So I want to encourage you that uh, you, all, you and me, all of us can make a difference in the kingdom of God. So Jesus' di uh, message to, it, to the world to his disciple is this. Now, I want, uh, I want to tell you in Luke chapter 17, verse 5 to 10, uh, it talks about consider yourself as unworthy servants. This was a, a whole passage. You don't have to turn. When you go back or after the service, you can ask for my PowerPoint. Take back the notes are all there. I want to tell you that this is a case where Jesus' disciple told Jesus, Lord, increase our faith. Uh, you go back and read. They followed Jesus three and a half years. They saw the signs and wonders. They saw the miracles. And then now they say, I also want those signs and wonders. I also don't want that power. Lord, increase our faith. And so Jesus taught them, if you have faith as big as a master seed, ask this mountain to move, it will move. Correct? You all know this scripture. Read that chapter carefully. The next verse after that, Jesus said, if any one of you have a servant working in the field, if he comes there, would you ask him to stop with you or would you ask him to... Uh, then Jesus continued to say, consider yourself as unworthy servants. So what has relationship with faith and then servanthood? Uh, so in first, Jesus teaches about faith. Then suddenly he jumps into the next portion. He says, if anyone have a servant working in the field. So I want to tell you, let me paraphrase this. Jesus says, what do you want all these things for? Uh, if you do not know that you are merely a servant of God. All of us must know that we are merely servants of God. You know, Paul in, in, in the epistle says, Paul, a servant of the Lord, called to be an apostle. He never, he, first, the first order is servanthood. We are called to serve first. You know, and I say that when you die and you go to heaven, Jesus is going to ask you, uh, uh, when you tell Jesus all that you have done, Jesus says, no, 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 good and faithful, 
servant. He never said good and faithful pastor. You know? He never said good and faithful evangelist. He faithful uh, 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 apostle. He said good and faithful servant. So the first office of your life and my life is servant before the Lord. So it's very important that you understand this. I, I have another message, but let me just take one part of it to show you. I tell you that God is not interested in results. All right? Uh, this is a, a message I preach on the four spiritual laws and the four spiritual flaws. God is not interested in results. Now, I was invited to FGA to preach this message, uh, uh, preach a message, and then uh, I said, God is not interested in results. Then the pastor said, die la, die la. I asked him to preach uh, so that the church become bigger. He preached, God is not interested in results. I said, God is not interested in results because God is the one that determines the results. Right? When you lay hand on the sick, the sick heal, get, who gets the glory? God gets the glory. When they don't get it immediately, who, whose problem? Not your problem, God's problem. Correct. But the Bible tells us God is a, not a man that he will lie. That means he will do at his own timing. So, so when, you, when, you, when you do that, that means at, the, at this juncture, whatever you do, uh, when you preach or you share the word of God, don't worry whether a person gets saved because never say go ye and make everybody Christian. Go ye and preach the good news. Your job, my job is to preach, to be obedient. So when, when God is not interested in result, He is only interested in obedience. Uh, whether he, when He asks you to give, will you give? When He asks you to go, will you go? That's the important thing. Because when you are obedient, uh, goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your The good things will follow you. Many people are result-orientated, but not faithfulness-orientated. Many people, uh, I think, Pastor, after so many years, you will know that you, your church members come and say, Pastor, I got financial problem, I got this problem, can you pray for me? After the pastor prayed and they, uh, they get ministered and God delivered, after that, they don't come to church anymore. Because why? They are result-orientated and then they are too busy now making money, no time to come to church. But when you are faithfulness-orientated, goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. So when you continue to be faithful, God will add the numbers into the church. You know, when you go to the pearly gates and the pastor of a 10,000 church, God, look at me, I'm a shiny beacon. I studied John Maxwell, I studied Joe Hengi. Today, my church is 10,000 strong. God will say, no, 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 no. I was the one that added number into church, not you. So when we understand this whole principle, serving the Lord is not difficult. Right? It's, it's easy. It's just... You do give a glass of water, Jesus said, you've done it unto me. That's where I come to the, when uh, John chapter 13, it takes too long if I read with you the verse by verse, you go back and read yourself. Uh, in John chapter 13, verse 1 to 16, it said, this is the part where Jesus washed the feet of the disciple. And read the last scripture uh, verse, it says, he showed them the full extent of his love. If you want, uh, you want blessing in your life, it says, uh, and you will be blessed. The Bible says, and you will be blessed. And God showed the full extent. The full extent of love is servant, serv serving one another. That's why Jesus decided to wash the feet of the disciple. So it is important for you all and I to, uh, uh, to know that servanthood is very important in the eyes of God. If you decide not to fight who is number one, it's easy to serve. You know, so and uh, Matthew 25, 31 to 46 talks about taking your inheritance, talking about when I was thirsty, you gave me water, drink, when I was in prison, you visited me. So Jesus divided the sheep and the goats. And then the, to the uh, sheep, he said, uh, take your inheritance. All right. So if you are doing serving, giving water, arranging the table and the chair, everything, God says, take your inheritance. All right? That, that's what God is saying, saying to all of us. So when we understand uh, the kingdom of God, the principle of the kingdom of God is different from the way we all look at it. We always think that the pastor's son or the pulpit preach is the pastor will get 50 souls get saved that day. 
the pastor get all the reward. I want to tell you, it's wrong. The musician get the reward. The, the worship leader get the reward. The person who arranged the chair also get the reward. Because the principle in the kingdom of God is, uh, King David said, the one that take care of the baggage and the one that goes to war receive the same reward. So the pastor preaching and the, and the person taking care of the baggage, the Bible says, arranging the chair, insignificant people also get the same reward. So that's the kingdom principle. We, we have a wrong principle that, oh, the reason why Billy Graham, when he preached so many people get saved, is because he was given four talents. The, the usher was just given one talent. But the, God expects the usher to do his part of the one talent. That's all. Yeah. Much is given, much is expected. That's the kingdom principle. I want to tell you that whenever the, our master asks for something, something supernatural happens. When he asks for two fish and five loaves of bread, he fed 4,000, he fed 5,000. Whenever he asks for earthen vessel to be filled with water, he turned into wine. Whenever Jesus asks for something, something supernatural happens. The Bible says he asks for the donkey. He will say how to ask, what was the condition of the donkey, how the owner will answer. He narrated a lot of the retrieval of the donkey. So the donkey must be very important. You know? I teach this in Asia Pacific Theological Seminary to a group of China students. After the, after the meeting, they all call, hee ha everybody like this. He asked for the donkey. Uh, the donkey was, the donkey and the coat were tied. It's like you and me. Our lives were tied to part of the world before when Jesus singled you out and me. Today, you are singled out because nobody noticed you. Nobody thought you were significant. I want to tell you that uh, that's why he said you're a royal priesthood. God singled out you. He chose you out of the many. You are lucky ones there, uh, that God chose you out. So, you are special in the eyes of God. You know. So, the donkey had an owner the Bible tells us that God never divulged the name of the owner. Uh, in that chapter, you read that he never tell because uh, during those days, uh, if you help Jesus, you'll be persecuted. So the owner's name was not even mentioned. No one has written on the, on the code. That means uh, God, no one found that it's of any use of you before. But I want to tell you God found use in you today. Uh, that's why he, uh, he has chosen you. He was ready when the Lord needed, so you all must be ready when the Lord needs you. Uh, disciple had, had a cloak placed on top, a cloak of righteousness. Uh, he covers you. Jesus went on the same path numerous times. And then I'm going to share with you a few talk, uh, points on donkey, but then later I will tell you the main class of the message. Donkey did the triumphal entry with a coat. That means with the, the message behind is today you and I must enter uh, uh, heaven with somebody, holding uh, somebody along with us. Uh, so it's a message that is your duty. There's a song that says, must I go empty-handed? Right? The Bible is part uh, of the plan of God. In Exodus 33, 3, it says that every firstborn belonged to the Lord. But the firstborn donkey, not a cow, not a horse, not a, must be redeemed by a lamb. If it's not, you have to break the neck. So, when you see Jesus sitting on the donkey entering to Jerusalem, it's a picture of redemption. Without the lamb of God in your life, you are doomed but because Jesus decided to choose you and sit on you, that's why you and I have salvation. Jesus entered Jerusalem on a donkey, but he will come back on a horse. Because a horse is an animal of war. It's an animal, it's a, it's a period of judgment. God will come back, the final second coming, he will judge everybody for what, is, what you have done. So I want to, to tell you that uh, he will, if Jesus had entered on a Arabian stallion instead of a donkey. Everybody is looking at the don horse and not looking at Jesus. But because Jesus went on the donkey, Jesus became significant in the eyes. Today, if you go to Jerusalem, uh, you, out of the 12 tribes of Israel, the, 
the tribe of Issachar still bear a banner of a donkey, right? Donkey was a bird just now. And this, this church people, Bible knowledge, very good. <laughs> because just now he, uh, our, our uh, MC says that, uh, you know, Balaam donkey, uh, so the donkey was the first animal that spoke, okay? He was found in the stable uh, because uh, you're talking about humility and uh, Israel is described as a wild donkey uh, because he, he, Israel uh, intermarried, uh, Israel turned away from God, uh, Steve Neck, God called them wild donkey. Ishmael uh, has been described as a wild donkey man. Uh, I mean, Ishmael is still very wild today. Huh? Right? Uh, Issachar is called a strong donkey lying down between uh, sheepfolds, and the Hebrew meaning is called hired. Uh, this one, the background of it is Leah. Uh, uh, Jacob had two wives, one called Leah and Rachel. Now, Rachel could not give birth, but Leah had four children, and the youngest son was called Reuben. Reuben found Mandrake. Mandrake is supposed to be uh, when you take Mandrake, you can give birth. So, when uh, Rachel found this thing, Rachel talked to Leah, can you ask Reuben to give me the mandrake? He says, I, I will allow you because Jacob spent a lot of time with Rachel but not Leah. So then he said, I will allow you to spend time with your, my, your husband. So eventually the son was born and the son was called Issachar. So that's why he's called Hired. I hired my husband to sleep with me. So that was why uh, uh, Isaka was called Hayat. He was called Donkey. Now, okay, this is the interesting part. The uh, characteristic of a donkey or a servant is this. A servant is a common animal and it doesn't take glory. But in service, it gets some recognition. Uh, you and I, uh, even pastor and so on, uh, we serve God, we, we get some recognition because of what we think. But I want to tell you, when Jesus read, rode on the donkey and entered Jerusalem, the people cried, Hosanna, Hosanna, son of David. Now, if you are the donkey, you ever stand up and say, Hallelujah, it's me, Jesus will fall out from you. <laughs> you are who you are because Jesus is riding on your life. Yeah. All right? Jesus chose to ride on your life. And that's why you are who you are today. There is some recognition in what you do and so on. Uh, but it is not about you. It's about Jesus riding in your life. So remember, it doesn't take glory. Uh, the donkey is non-competitive. If you take a gun and shoot, the horse will race against one another. But if you go and see the videos, you take a horse, take a gun and shoot, the donkey will run his way because it doesn't compete. All right, if you understand as uh, if you are a servant of God, I'm not here to compete against you, right? You are not here to compete against. We are here to complement one another. Why intentionally I tell you, uh, the one that take care of the baggage and the one that goes to war with you, I'm telling you all, we are not here to compete against one another. We are here to complement one another. Different people got different roles. The Bible says different gifting is given to everybody. So we are here to realize first we are not here to compete with one another. A donkey is usually considered a stupid animal. I mean, in school you all study as stupid as a donkey. But God always takes the stupid of this world to confound the wise. Now, to serve people is stupid. Sometimes I spend money, I spend time going and serve these people, but nothing to do. Uh, yeah? You know? So it, it looks very stupid. But the Bible says, God is no man debtor. You know, whatever you have done, he will repay you. Uh, you can never outgive God, okay? God, donkey never complain, and it's a burden barrier. Uh, for us, we are, if you call your servant, your servant of God, don't complain. And we know promotion comes from the Lord. Uh, and we just continue to serve God in whatever God has asked to do. It has no direction. God, uh, we listen to the master directing us. Uh, donkey saw the angel, but God opened the mouth. I want to tell, especially uh, lay leaders and church leaders, uh, 
I want to tell you that God never made a speaking donkey. Otherwise, today the donkey is still speaking. The Bible says He opened the mouth of the donkey. So if you are a servant of God, don't simply open your mouth until God also is to open. Many people get conflict with leadership and so on. They think they are smarter, they can preach better and so on. You may be smarter, you may be, but you wait for your timing. Because God has His own timing for everybody, right? And uh, don't simply open your mouth. So when you open, you get into a lot of problems. Huh? Remember, God never made a speaking donkey. Although a donkey was the first animal that speak. So don't simply open your mouth unless it's necessary. Or unless God talks to you. Huh? Of course, it's a, a donkey is an animal, a voice of conscience to Balaam. But, but you do not simply open your mouth. Remember that. The donkey breached the world to the city of God. So part of the, your role as a servant is to breach the world huh, to, to God. That's what our role, our primary role is to breach the world to God. Right? Samson slew, uh, used the jawbone of a donkey to slew a thousand uh, men. Now if you guard your mouth, you can kill a thousand Philistines. Many people open their mouth and then never honor their word. I, I make an appointment at 3 o'clock, I come up, but they never turn up. They don't even say sorry. Uh, because they, their word is so cheap. Yeah? But if you guard your mouth, uh, jawbone means the mouthpiece, you guard it well, when you release the word, it comes with power. Because you believe when you release the word, come up power. But if you don't even believe your own word, how could it effectively be able to accomplish the things that you want it done. If us first believe in, the, in your own word and also believe in the word of God. The, don the donkey brays, it says, every time you hear a donkey bray, it's, it's like in pain. It's, it's like manarata, come Lord Jesus. It's in pain. Yeah, if the, the way the donkey cries, you and I must live uh, forward looking to God because this world uh, in essence, is challenging, uh, difficult, and so on. But we must be focused and let come, Lord Jesus. You know, uh, it's important that you realize this. The donkey got beaten. Huh? If you are a servant of God, and some of you are, you know, when I, uh, I in my office, people ask me. Uh, brother, where is your church? I say, this is my church, ah. my office table. Because I got people coming to my office and say, hey, I, brother, I don't go to church anymore. Why? My pastor, lah, my pastor, hypocrite. Because why? He say, he, he tell me to go prayer meeting, but he don't come. <laughs> so how I'm going to handle this stuff? People, they come into my office, I say, I say then I pray for, I say, brother, I tell you what, next Sunday you go to church, you kneel down at the pulpit, don't invite your pastor, don't invite your friends, everybody you kneel down and pray. I promise you, two weeks later, somebody will kneel with you. Before you know it, your pastor is only kneeling there. Because people are looking at people, life of conviction, you are convicted that God is real. You are not bothered whether the pastor go or not, whether your friend go to church prayer meeting or not. You know God is real. You know God answers prayer. That's why you're going for the prayer meeting. You don't go for a prayer meeting because Achong go, Akau go. Achong don't go, Akau don't go, you still go. Because you're, you're convicted that God is alive. Now, when I see a man like that, when I see a woman like that, I see that man and that woman on fire for God. Martin Luther says, uh, when people ask him about revival, he says, I set myself on fire first. Before you expect anything, what's wrong with the church today? You get hurting people, it's because of this. You see, uh, we are called a light of the world. Even the smallest candle will glow in the dark. Correct? A candle will not lose its light while lighting other candles. But too many Christians like their candle in the church, they do nothing, blow one another candle. Trying to find fault with one another. This person never comes in. This person never. That's all you are looking at. But if you have that time and energy, 
Even if you are the smallest candle, you take to the dark place, they need you. There's a hurting world that needs you out there. You don't need to hear the good, uh, good Samaritan message, the prodigal son, more than one time. Uh, if you have heard once before, you can bring that message to the world. But too many people are in the church finding problems and so on. Uh, and then at the end of the day, their faith is anchored not in God, but in the people around them. When the people fail them, uh, then they say, uh, you know, I want to share with you also this. These are last days, and I think this is a very important one I want to share with you. All your friends in come in four alphabet T. Some friends are tools, T O O L S. You use them, they use you, you scratch my back, I scratch your back. We help one another. No bad agenda. Right? Some friends are T for teachers. They are like Paul in your life, mentor. They will mentor you. So you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to go through the same problem people go through. You learn from them. Then uh, uh, there are teachers in your life. Some friends are T for trainee. They are Timothy in your life. God bring them for you to help them to fulfill their destiny. Train them and guide them so that they will fulfill their destiny. But there are some friends who are T for terrorists. <laughs> they terrorize your life. Because they come to see you, hallelujah brother, hallelujah sister, borrow money. <laughs> After borrow money, never repay back. <laughs> you know, and I want to tell you that they go to look for a pastor or minister for, for counseling. And the pastor spent three hours, two hours talking there. But they don't, they are not prepared to change one. They just want sympathy and they want what? They, after that, the pastor tell them, okay, this man, you got no money to give tithes, no need to give like it's okay. They go to the whole city and say, pastor say, no need to give tithes. <laughs> Change everything out of context, it all only to destroy you. So they terrorize your life. Huh? I want to tell you that there are many of this. A friend came to my office and said, if Jesus is all-knowing, he knows the beginning to the end, why did he choose this Judas Iscariot as his disciple? You know, but again, these are challenging questions, so I pray. I say, then I told him, Brother, Jesus is telling you in the church still got Judas is correct. In the church still got Judas is correct. Don't be so naive. Huh? You all learn. Uh, there are also people that are still not right because they are, they are still work in progress. Okay? So I want to, to tell you that, you see, most people, Choose their friends, but God get the blame. When you choose wrong friends, at the end of the day, you blame God. I see, I, I helped this person, and this person cheated me, so I don't want to go to church. So, this, so all these things happen because we find a way to escape from all our own personal responsibility, own personal mistakes, and then we blame everything onto God. It has nothing to do with God. It has to do with you and me. So you must remember this, that at the end of the day, it's important that you and I choose the right people, especially end times. The uh, Bible says, uh, it's a wicked world out there, there are wolves out there. So uh, I want to tell you that uh, the devil was once an angel also. So be, be careful uh, uh, what, what you do. Uh, but please don't go after the church and say, hey, Pastor say you look like the devil, okay? <laughs> I, I never say that. I just tell you to be careful, okay? Uh, you just be careful, all right? Uh, a servant is proactive. You see, Jesus didn't wait for his disciples. In the, in the tradition of the Jews, when, when Jesus visited the house, they are supposed to wash his leg first one. But he chose to wash the people's leg. His disciple, like he acted first. He he never wait for people. If you come to the church and you see the chairs are not arranged properly, or things are not done, don't wait for the pastor. Pastor never tell me, ma. You go to God and tell. Pastor never tell me. They are proactive. When Abraham and Sarah saw the messenger coming, they had many servants. You know, 
but they never assigned their servants to go do. What they did, they ran towards the message and they served the messenger. So when you are a servant of God, you call your servant a servant, you must be proactive. That means when you see there is a need, go and minister to the need. Don't wait for a pastor to tell you. Uh, you cannot shift the blame and say the pastor never tell me, that's why I never do. Uh, that's not how the servant behaves. The servant is willing to lay Again, the servant is willing to lay down his life. That sometimes is inconvenient. You know, we all, uh, uh, it's very easy for us on Sunday and say, Dara, Dara, you never go to church. But how many of us offer our friends, hey, you got transport now? I pick you to church. Uh, we must lay down. Uh, sometimes it's inconvenient, but we must learn to lay down our life. Because Jesus says, for this reason, my Father loves me. Jesus said, this, this is the reason why my father loves me. My father loves me because I lay down my life, uh, knowing that I will pick it up again. You all must be able to stand before God one day and, and Jesus said, for, and, and you can say before the uh, council of people, for this reason, my father loves me. For this reason, God loves me. For this reason, Jesus loved me. Because I learned to lay down my life. I learned to... I know it's inconvenient, I know it's difficult, I know it's challenging, uh, I know it's not on my way, but I did that because I want to, it was for that soul, it was to build that person, you know. And so as a servant, you must do these things. I want to tell you there are, after all this responsibility, I want to tell you there are favours and blessings for being a servant. The Bible tells us the donkey saw the angel even before Balaam. If you are a servant of God, you see the activity of God even before other people. You know, before even Balaam can see. Because God uh, chose to reveal to the humble of humble hearts. Uh, uh, the servant who brought the empty vessel, uh, where Jesus turned the water into wine, were the first people who saw the miracle. Uh, if you are a servant of God, really... Uh, uh, servant of God, you will see supernatural activities before other people, before other people uh, can witness. The son of Issachar, the Bible tells us they are the people that know the signs of time, right? Uh, Barnabas was a typology of a donkey. When Paul got saved in the road of Damascus, it was Barnabas that introduced him to the Jerusalem council. You see, Paul was the persecutor of the Christians. So what happened is no one trusted him. But because the Bible says that Barnabas was an honorable man, because Barnabas introduced him to the Jerusalem Council, Paul ministry began to flourish. So in, in, in other words, you and I, we can help other people's ministry. Uh, we don't have to be number one in everything. Uh, Joseph saw the, the stars were bowed down to him, but his brother made sure he was not number one. He sold him as slave. When he went to Potiphar house, he was not number one. Potiphar was number one, he was number two. When he went to prison, prison warden one was number one, he was number two. When he went out from the prison, Pharaoh was number one, he was still a prime minister, he was still number two. But the Bible says he served the purposes of God. So important, you and I serve the purposes of God. So uh, uh, Barnabas is a typology of a donkey. Uh, so you, it's okay for you to help other people's ministry. Bill, you don't get the name, it's okay. But uh, build other people's ministry. Again, I come back to the same point. Uh, the one that takes care of the baggage and the one that goes to war receives the same reward. The Shunammite lady... Uh, uh, Bible says whenever Elijah went down there, she always prepared a room for him. She showed hospitality, and then and she couldn't conceive. Elijah prayed, and she had a child. A year later, after that, when when the child died, uh, Elijah prayed, the child came back to life. If you are a servant with a humble heart and serve, God always bring favor into your life. Stephen, Stephen was serving on table. Every, everybody wants to, to be on the pulpit, but the Bible says that God chose uh, Stephen to serve on tables. Alright? Now I want to tell you, probably 
devil was praying in Tangkura Ashibarantara, while wiping. But the Bible says, signs and wonder follow him everywhere he go. He never say follow him on the pulpit. He was following on the marketplace. He was arranging the chair and the tables, and he was wiping, and then signs and wonders happened. He was praying for somebody, miracles happened, miracles happened. So you don't always think that miracle happens on the pulpit. The miracles happen where you are. All right? Doctors, the Bible says doctors do good works and charity. Then she died and then Peter prayed for her. Tabitha arrived and she, so she came back to life. John, Jonathan served uh, David. So the Bible tells us that when Jonathan died, he had a crippled son. King David made sure that the son sat next to him on, on the table and the dinner. Uh, when you serve, that's why God will never forget. That's the principle behind it. Uh, not only you, your children, children will be blessed. That's why the promises of God, when you serve God, He promises not only you, but your children, children. That is His promise. <laughs> Elijah and the widow's oil. Okay? The Bible talks about the widow. Uh, the husband was uh, one of the prophets. Our Elijah, and uh, when the, hus the husband died and she was in debt, she told uh, Elijah and says, Remember my husband, your servant. She reminded uh, Elijah that, Remember my husband, your servant. So, because of what uh, uh, the husband did uh, for Elijah, Elijah prayed for her and the all keep on running overflow and so on. So there was no lacking in it. These are principles you can see how God operates and so on. And I want to tell you if you are the cup bearer, cup bearer is the one that every time the king takes something, he has to test first whether he's got poison or not. But he's the one next to the king. If you are a servant of God, you are the one that is next next to the kingdom of, king of God, the king of the kings. Okay, I want to say servanthood is important because Jesus served. Jesus taught his follower, uh, his followers should serve and God has provided everyone with a gift for serving. Now, I want to tell you there is no one here without a gift because he gave one person, one talent, one two talent, one four talent. Everybody got a gift. Uh, if, you can, if you don't think you can preach, but I sure you can cook curry chicken and give to your neighbor. <laughs> Correct? Uh, there's something you can do. There's some gift. You just need to identify your gifts and be able to use that gift to serve in, in ways. I'm sure some of these people, the old folks home or the, the whatever um, uh, social ministry you have, needs people like you. You know, when I went to Aceh uh, during the tsunami, there was this family with that 13 children, uh, this old lady with 13 children, and the children all died because of the tsunami. And she was just, don't know what to do standing there. But all I, I, I could do to her, what could I do for her? I cannot bring back the 13 children. I went down there, I hugged her. I hugged her, she began to cry and cry. There are some things that you and I cannot do. When you have a friend who got cancer or something, some of us cannot do anything, we can pray. Yes, but we cannot do anything. But what we can, I always tell my friends, there are some things I cannot do. But one thing I can do, I'm here for you, I say. I just hold your hands, I'm here for you. So, always, uh, some of our friends need you, just hold their hands. Huh? Journey with them together. We Christians are people who like to see through people. Oh, this is no good, no good. We never see people through. Uh, we have learned to walk, walk and journey with some people, some of our friends. And that's where we begin to serve. There's so many ways we can serve. We should encourage the ministry of serving. There are a lot of Bible verses in this. You can take the notes later. But when we serve others, we are serving Jesus. Uh, blessing follows those who are serving. Now I want to tell you, do not be an empty bottle with a beautiful label. Many of us are like that. The whole life is empty, but it's a beautiful world. Christian, very Christian, but you do nothing. 
we don't make allow never allow our life to make a difference. We were created to make a difference. Huh? Now I tell you, many I've gone to many places, maybe forty over countries, but I can tell you, many many Christians buy what we call Christian Dior perfume. <laughs> Christian Dior, Dior means perfume, huh? Christian perfume. Smell like Christian. But don't behave like Christian. You know? So I want to encourage you all uh, at this juncture that begin to take servanthood seriously. Little things that you do is significant. It is when you think it's insignificant, it becomes significant. Uh, I want to share with you a testimony. When I was in the 20s, uh, there was year, Old Testament time. Uh, I used to fetch a lady, she was, on, she was crippled on a wheelchair. Uh, I used to fetch her to the University Hospital. She was not a Christian. Then, uh, over every weekend, then one day my car got stolen. And then, uh, then I told her, sorry, sister, I cannot fetch you now. My car was, but God, God going to give me a, another car. She thinks this man crazy, what she say? Fanatic, huh? I said, God is going to bless me with another car. But I want to tell you that I, I persisted uh, spending time with her. Then, after, of course, all that season was over, I had other things to do. But 20 years later, I was preaching in a meeting, Christian meeting like this. And after I finished, this sister walked up to me and said, Brother, are you Wilson? I said, yes, I am. She said, you remember 20 years ago, you used to fetch me to the university hospital. I was on a wheelchair. Today, I'm already safe. I'm a Christian. We, you and I cannot know what impact we can do to another person's life. Uh, how we can change another person by the little things you do. Uh, uh, and so it's important. I never expected that thing to happen. But God sometimes come and encourage me. Uh, or encourage me with anything like that. Right? That whatever you sow was not in vain. So I want to uh, encourage you all continue to make a difference because you were saved for that purpose. I, as I mentioned to you earlier, if you were saved just to go to heaven, you will be in heaven now. But you are still here. You are here to make a difference. Amen. Shall we all stand? Shall we all stand? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to uh, ask those who have Years ago, made commitment to the Lord and said, Lord, uh, I used to uh, wake up five o'clock in the morning. You used to wake up. You used to cry to the Lord, Lord, help me, Lord. I need, Lord, a touch, Lord. And God came into your life and made the difference in your life. And then after that, the Bible tells us the bird in the air came, took the seed. Uh, God sowed in your life. The scorching heat, the pressure of the world. You've forgotten all about these things. You took the fruit. You cut the root. You don't wake up five o'clock anymore. Uh, because your problem is solved. Please don't allow another problem so you have to wake up five o'clock in the morning. Uh, remember those moments you make a commitment that you will, God, you help me, I will serve you. But somehow along the way, you just forgotten about serving God. You've forgotten that uh, about being involved in the things of God. I want to tell you this day, we don't have to come out here. Uh, we will pray together, but you look to God and ask God to put back that fire in you, uh, allow you to grow, and then you respond. You see, the, the kingdom of God is very simple. You, you don't come to attend church. You come to meet the Lord. You come to church to position yourself to hear from God, not to attend church. You didn't come to punch your cut. You come to hear from God. And if God has spoken to you today, then it's time for you to begin to work and allow God to change. Because the Bible says, if you draw nigh unto Him, He will draw nigh unto you. If you seek Him, you will find Him. That's what the Bible says. So it is important when we come uh, to church, it is not just attending church, it is to find alignment in our life. 
all of us, like, like Dr. Kwan said, all of us sometimes make mistakes. Sometimes our focus get off focus once in a while. But we need to realign. We need to come back and say, God, it's you, Lord. It's about you, Lord. You made the difference in my life. Allow me to make the difference in the world. Amen. Every eyes closed, I will pray and you look to God. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you, Lord, this day, Lord, that you have spoken into our life, Lord. We remember this day that you made the difference in our life, Lord. It was you, Lord. It was you all the while, Lord. Through it all, through the thick and thin, it was you, Lord, who watched over us, Lord. King David said, when I go to sleep and I wake up in the morning, it is you who sustain us, Lord. You who gave us life. We continue to look to you, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you begin to speak into our life, Lord. In our moments, our quiet time with you, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you begin to reveal your truth in our life, Lord. We want to learn through revelation, not through tribulation, Lord. We want to learn about, more about you, Lord, and the things that you want of us, Lord. We want to serve your purpose, Lord. Bless my brothers and sisters here as they look to you, Lord. Father, may they experience the supernatural naturally, Lord. In Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Let's give God a for a wonderful uh, sermon. Remember, we are all servants. We cannot be greater than Jesus. Jesus is a servant, so we are all servants. Amen. Let's sing these songs. Uh, let's uh, worship uh, team come up to lead us in this song. And by singing this song, you feel that you uh, have something to pray for. Can come for our Brian Wilson church leader uh, pray for you. Otherwise, uh, be blessed. We have, have a blessed Sabbath. And remember that at the back we have refreshment for you to fellowship. Amen. Some of us only meet once a week. Yeah, we should should have meet more frequent by the time of us in the old from our station. Let's sing this song uh, with a heart, Lord. Let's sing this song, brother and sister. Let's sing it with a heart. Amen. Hallelujah. We are going to do hallelujah. Serve the King of Kings and serve each other. That is the cross. Let us do it, brothers, and declare to the world. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Father, stir in the, our heart. 
awaken us for the calling of servanthood in our lives. You raise us up as a royal priesthood, holy nation, God's special people, God's chosen people. Yes, Lord. You don't use angels, but use Christians. That's why we are so privileged. And let us not forget that, brothers and sisters. Right and respond when going out. When you align yourself in the church, let's start going out. Marketplace, workplace, school, hallelujah, institution. Let us be the light and salt, hallelujah. Segenap hatiku menyembahmu Yesus, ku bersyukur. Thank you, Lord. Father, we bless you. God said, let my face shine upon you. Let me leave how my countenance upon you, children of God. I'm with you forever and ever. I keep you and I will bless you. Go with the power of the Holy Spirit. Go with my presence. Be a blessing. Be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name, and bring us back again, Lord, next month, next week, same time, same place. In Jesus' name, may God's people say, Amen. Hallelujah. Got anything to pray for? Can come for. Otherwise, God bless us. Amen. Say to each other, Shalom. Nice to see you. Nice to meet. Encourage each other. Amen. Hallelujah.